Delaunay from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And I'm Rachel Renner from Richmond, Virginia, also an anarchist. And we bring to you today the news from Underground. And which, um, of course, before we begin, I'd like to put out the announcements that I uh, look up the new website of Liberal RVA. We put a lot of new updates and features on there, especially the, the calendar feature. So if you want to catch us spreading anarchy around VCU or uh, when the next uh, drinking philosophy or gathering we're going to have at Fallout next month on the 22nd of March, I believe. There's going to be a 1984 theme. So that's going to be a lot of fun to look forward Room to. 101 in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I guess I uh, just want to put out the announcements real quick. And with that, let's begin the news from underground. All right, so somewhere in the depths of Arizona, Jan Brewer announces veto of Arizona anti-gay bill SB 1062. Arizona Governor Jan Brewer, Republican, announced her decision to veto legislation on Wednesday that would have allowed businesses to legally refuse service to anyone on religious freedom grounds effectively allowing them to discriminate against same-sex couples or anyone if your or, god can dream it yeah and and that's uh because specifically in the bill it doesn't say that they're targeting uh, homosexuals or lgbt um that's not really phrased but people are reading between the lines and they say well that's really who they're they mean um and a good time to shoehorn it on the whole um you know should Covenant, not covenant, um, convent run um, organizations, Catholic services be forced to, you know, provide birth control for people, you know, it's um, a valid conflict of interest type thing, one could argue, but still, yeah, um, Brewer said the bill had the potential to create more problems than it purports to solve. Well, it's government, surprise, surprise. Senate Bill 1062 does not address a specific concern, a specific or present concern related to religious liberty in Arizona. Well, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> she said, I have not heard one example of where business owners' religious liberty has been violated. Hmm. Well, other liberties being violated. Let's just engage in some subterfuge right there. Arizona hasn't been the only state pushing for a bill that would allow open discrimination against same-sex couples. Similar bills have been popping up in states including Tennessee, Kansas, South Dakota, and Maine, oddly enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and this is something that should be, uh, frankly, um, something you should be able to do if you do have freedom uh, to discriminate. And not that I take the stance or neither the Rachel take the stance or none of the friends or the people I'm close to take the stance against uh, discrimination because of uh, who you have uh, sexual preferences for. But um, I would like to know who have um, this uh, negative bias stance towards yeah, them. I would love bigotry to be transparent. You know, as much as I hate, say, the posters when you go down um, 95 South, you know, um, dead fetuses and, you know, yeah. murdering the face of God and all, I'd rather look at those fucking billboards any day than have somebody tell me I don't have control over my own reproductive organs. You know, I mean, lay it out there if you have this <laughs> viewpoint. Pretty please, you know. I, I'd rather know that you hate me so I can deal with that head on. But right, so I, can, <laughs> so I can avoid you, so I can have uh, the freedom, therefore, to disassociate, right? Uh, that's a very fundamental uh, par part of being free is to disassociate from those you don't want to have any connection or interaction with. Uh, whereas when government, you're forced to associate um, you have no freedom to to let go of those connections. Uh, government, it all, it's all about, uh, it, like you can look at Lincoln, of course, right? And and the great uh, war of Northern aggression in which he, re he did not allow uh, people in the South to disassociate. Um, so I mean, that's, that's what creates a lot of these problems to begin with. And so you find a lot of people trying to find uh, proactive ways to, to deal with it and they have to do it through government. Whereas if you didn't have a government monopoly on land, you'd have thousands of communities, you'd, you'd be able to identify those that were against your preferences and Great. That's I'll, I'll, that's at least I know where not to go. <laughs> and more so now during, say, Reconstruction or the Jim Crow era, admittedly, which a lot of people are bringing up the fact will this negate so much progress that was made during the Civil Rights Movement? Well, for my part, I'm willing to say, you know, we forget during the Civil Rights Movement, the people who were, you know, turning the fire hoses on children were the police force. Right. You know, that's. <laughs> I just have an overwhelming feeling that this is the government stepping in and saying, you know, don't worry, we'll take care of you when there's, you know, there's no problem yet, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, like in the South, I think example. a lot of people who own restaurants know that, uh, you know, um, everybody likes to go out and party, particularly gay couples, you yeah. know. I mean, you're going to make it harder for them to adopt children, they're going to have more free time on their hands, people, you know, uh, cause and effect here. So. 
This is a preemptive strike of the most tacky and transparent nature, and it is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look at the South and, and, and the ways that uh, people like to complain that there is uh, rampant racism towards in businesses, for example, and that they didn't allow people to sit in their buses or specific areas on their buses. But that was a government law that prevented those businesses from opening their seats up to anyone. Uh, it was government preventing uh, the acceptance, uh, moving beyond uh, pigment of skin color. And so you find that in, in all of these different ways, especially in the civil rights era, that's just trying to rectify problems the government created to begin with. That's just uh, putting band-aid solutions to the effects. And then instead of looking at the cause that it was government all this time that created uh, all this uh, separation, this disunity, um, racism, it promotes that. I mean, you look at um, the Marriage Act, for example, that the reason why government got involved in the Marriage Act was just to prevent uh, interracial couples from marrying. It was to prevent white people from marrying black people, from marrying Hispanics, Asians. That's that's all it was. It's just uh, some racial um, motivators uh, be behind that, and the government you can force them into everyone the else. The insemination of the flesh farm. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people did learn from the past, did learn the virtue of a boycott. I mean, George Takai's um, statements when this all hit the fan, particularly since his husband is from Arizona or has family in Arizona, brought the very good point. Sure, yeah, lay it out there. We're not going to buy from you. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got a lot of sweet Star Trek money to spend. <laughs> And so we're going to go next to the, uh, here's an interesting perspective of a business owner in Arizona. Uh, so these are his thoughts. In the days leading up to this, I put a sign in the window of my pizzeria that said, we reserve the right to refuse service to Arizona legislators. I love it. Uh, the reaction was vastly and overwhelmingly positive, with only a few people telling me that they wouldn't eat, ever eat at my restaurant again. Yeah. Mainly, we have received many, many messages of support, phone calls, emails, texts from people who live in Tucson, across the state, and even from outside the United States. It was irresistible. I instantly typed a comment on my Facebook page saying that the busybodies in the capital of Phoenix were not allowed to come in and sit at my table. Minutes later, one of my followers supplied a sign that so eloquently expressed my viewpoint. And so I laminated it. And by afternoon, it was on my doors. <laughs> now that's something I would love to actually maybe press put, put here for Richmond and start passing around. Now no political rulers allowed, no extortionists allowed, no tax collectors. Um, since then a lot of similar signs showed up in the windows of Tuxen businesses saying we reserve the right to serve anybody. Tuxen is a little more liberal than Maricopa County in Phoenix. We're a university town. People here just don't care about things like that. At restaurants we just serve you and smile. And the only thing they're concerned about is the color of your money. Um, Visit Tucson, the yeah. Portland of Arizona. So that's a, well, that's a fundamental thing about having freedom is to, to discriminate. And everyone does it all the time. Uh, and the foods that you select and don't select, uh, the, the clothing that you wear or go and, and choosing a different style of clothing or discriminating between styles to, I mean, you don't, uh, I mean, do you give out your number to every single person that asks? Right? Uh, even in, in dating, you are discriminating, you are selecting, you have your preferences. Yeah, by definition, discriminating means having some rational thought behind your decision making process. You know, the Ew, homophobia. Homo homophobia is just that it's an oogie bullying type of fear. You know, there's no way that, you know, it's going to affect your sexual orientation if you serve somebody a cheeseburger, unless it's a really good cheeseburger. <laughs> but yeah. The, the, this is very much um, what I feel women come across a lot when um, they're told why they need government. You need somebody to take care of you. You need somebody to tell you, you know, um, like, you know, don't worry, little lady, you know, we'll make sure things are all right for you. And not that I'm dismissing the ugliness of Jim Crow, but I think in the modern age we have a huge capacity to communicate and, you know, shame people more so via the tool of the internet, but also to, you know, put forth a myriad of, you know, life options and opinions. So you can make an informed decision on what to believe, you know, and this is, this is one of the options we're putting out here, you know, um, bigoted people of Arizona go right up and put up those signs and see how your business suffers. Yeah. Make the boycotts easier for all of us. Right. I mean, that's, that's, that's how you, you combat that sort of stuff. You know, if you don't like this bakery, for example, in Colorado, because they don't serve their, their cakes to, to, uh, to homosexual couples, for example, then, then compete against that, you know, create a, create an even better business, you know, uh, steal their business, say, you know, while they discriminate and that's perfectly fine, I'm open to everyone. 
right? No, no, no matter what ethnicity, color, or sexual preference, that, that doesn't matter as long as you enjoy my cakes and my services, right? Um, I enjoy your cakes and your services. <laughs> and, that's, and that's really it. That's, that's all you, you need, uh, to, I guess, to, if you really want to go at them, not their government, not try, trying to make it illegal, because that becomes a more hypocritical stance, because then you're saying that, well, I don't like the fact that you're forcing your preferences by, well, I guess, the argument that you're not allowing other people to, to be served by you. Um, you know, you don't have a right to be served, uh, but at the same time, through government, you're saying, well, I'm going to now force my preferences against you to not be able to act upon your preferences, right? Um, so that in itself, you know, contradicts, uh, I guess, the very notion that you're trying to be righteous to begin with. Whereas in a free and voluntary society, you, you can point out the ones that, um, that discriminate, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, hooters discriminate against males, right? Uh, you find a lot of different, well, and that they don't hire males to be waiters. Right? They don't they have biggest serve less. women nearly as quickly. <laughs> <laughs> saying fuck hooters Sorry. yeah that's, that's, that's what you'll find I mean that's not uh, I mean to, to the extreme point sir but at least we'll be able to, to point out where they are and avoid them and, uh, and tell our friends tell our families tell the, to our community not to patronize them and then, and then they'll go out of business right that market for them will get smaller and smaller and smaller because who wants to be associated with, with someone who, who goes to such uh, big of stores to begin with and receive such big of a service and to begin with. And what person, you know, in the queer community is going to want to, first of all, give their money and risk the fact that they're going to sabotage their service to you because they covertly resent you. I mean, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want pubes in my wedding cake if I'm going to marry a woman. I mean, right. Ugh. Yeah, and you're not doing me any 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 service or favors by trying to force these businesses to serve me. It's like, oh, that's great. I, I, I don't want anything to do with them to begin with. Right, uh, let the, the market show for what it's worth, and then at least there, there's a lot of voluntary ways to do it. You know, social ostracism. You know, to show that these uh, misbehaviors that we see and, and we, we respond to that, but not associating ourselves with that, not patronizing with that. Um, otherwise, you know, just uh, trying to use the the weapon of the state again to force our preferences. I mean, that's what the state does best, and that's uh, a contradictory notion to begin with. With these, um, I guess. With trying to justify the need for for state intervention, um, so yeah, it's uh, I don't know. <laughs> violence, of course, seems, seems like an easy solution, but you find that, of course, these religious groups are trying to go to extreme lengths to trying to hide what it is that they want to discriminate against, instead of then then themselves being open about their discrimination. Uh, of course, you read between the lines what they're really going for, but they can't just come out and say it. Uh, which I would like a business to just come out and say it, that uh, we don't serve Hispanics, uh, we don't serve uh, bisexuals, we don't serve uh, this particular preference. It's like, great, I'm, you know, I'm gonna... Oh, it's okay, so the government will put a gun to their head. No! God. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. We don't want to be that guy. Let them be that guy. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. what do you think? Is that a good uh, wrap up cover? Oh, um, that's well. If you want to go through the uh, the most, no, what is it? The frequently asked questions here at the bottom. What does it all mean? We can uh, do I that. I think everybody just did that. We did all that. Yeah, okay. I think we covered Freedom all that. Freedom associate and disassociate. Discriminate, associate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that's very oh, important. Okay. Um, go on. I think yeah. you did that on. Unfortunately, yeah. with government, you have no freedom to disassociate. Uh, yeah, remember, guys, statism has no safe word. And We're gonna throw you in the pen together, and you're gonna like it. Right. So yeah, Instead with of that. actually learning to like people as individuals. Co cooperate. I mean, you'll find, you know, try to trace back where this discrimination comes from and a lot of this stuff is taught. Oh, you did make a note of the Hooters thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mad at Hooters right now. So thank you for watching, guys. This is your news from Underground. Um, thank you for support. You know, share and subscribe if you can, please. My name is Kyle Molone. And I'm Rachel Renner. And I'll see you guys at the Victory Party. Take good yeah. care.